And Stanford takes a 2-1 lead. What a smart shot right there. Holly Campbell going for the deep corner. When that defender releases forward, smart players know that that deep corner is vulnerable. McClure back to serve. She's a key factor, Kevin Hamley told us in their success, a service error. So side out Oregon, we're tied at two. McClure, a sophomore who doesn't get a lot of the headlines, but she does so many things well. And when she plays well, Stanford is pretty much untouchable. As a look at the National Player of the Year, Catherine Plummer, and you can see why she has got a cannon of an arm. Catherine Plummer gets a lot of kills just like this. The defense is in the right spot, but there's just way too much heat, way too much velocity on the ball. Very difficult for the defender to control it. She was the National Freshman of the Year two years ago, became the first in history to repeat by being National Player of the Year last year. Back row attack is successful by Van Sickle. And she's got two kills already for Oregon. Yeah, Coach Hambly told me one of the things that they are working on is defending that back row attack. That has been a bit of a challenge. Oregon today is without the services of one of their better players, Taylor Borup. She was a National Player of the Week earlier this year. So they're down a player. Now the swing out of the middle goes out. Stone couldn't connect, points Stanford. Jenna Gray back to serve, a fascinating player, first team All-American in volleyball and the runner up in the NCAA track and field championship in the javelin. Willow Johnson. We mentioned if she looks familiar to you baseball fans, it's the daughter of Randy Johnson, the big unit, and is a very good volleyball player. She's come up huge for Oregon this season. Yeah, lefty as well. So coming in the middle of the court, you don't often see lefties, so it's a different look for the defense. Nice save by Nunna Miller for Oregon, the Libero. The joust goes to Rasky and the Ducks. So talk us through that, Dane, because I know you've taught me the shorter player has the advantage typically here. Yeah, look here. The Stanford players look like they're going to get up higher and push down, but the player that's pushing upwards has that leverage and more times than not wins the joust. Oregon up one, opening set here in Eugene. And there's Hintz, despite an incredible effort, can't say that Vanderweide, her first kill of the match. Love it. We're already seeing extremely high-level play on both sides of the net, and you will see Hintz dig some balls that no one else in the country can get to. Cameron Testad back to serve, a freshman from Solana Beach, California. We have a big expectations for her as a Libero one day. Playing DS now. Fitzmorris with the kill for Stanford. Fitzmorris, a junior opposite from Overland Park, Kansas. Comes from a volleyball family as well. Her mother was on the Peruvian national team in basketball for several years and played at a high level in volleyball. Alade kept that alive for Stanford and the Cardinal wins the rally. Little hang time there by the Stanford block. Alade sensing the ball was going to be tipped, delayed the block, and then threw it back. Catherine Plummer to serve 15 aces this season. She had an ace on match point against Oregon State Friday night. And hammered to the court by Vanderweide, her second kill. Yeah, Vanderweide averages 3.46 kills per set, and this is why. Look at the sharp angle. Not even Morgan Hens playing sharp is in the right spot. Vanderweide turned 21 Friday night, and they celebrated with a win over Cal here on this court. Fitzmorris again scoring for Stanford. Her dad also was a professional basketball player. 
I got to admit, as a fan, I love watching this woman play. Morgan Hintz is just so fun to watch at that Libro position. And Van Sickle's having a very good first set, Dane. Yeah, she's, she's really going for it on the outside. That is what is important, having an aggressive approach, attacking Stanford because their height, the wall they put up at the net can be intimidating. Good serve, and Hintz receives it. That's why. Right Excellent there. serve by Ronica Stone. Yeah, right there is what you what you saw. A tough serve by Stone. That's what Oregon is going to have to do. Put pressure on Stanford. If they pass the ball well, like that right there, hands putting it on the spot, it's very difficult to slow down. Both teams stressing aggressive serving in their practice yesterday. A rare whiff by Campbell. And Oregon now with a three-point advantage. Oregon has not beaten Stanford since 2011. Now here's a little mistiming. A little bit late going up in that middle blocker position. You want to jump before that ball set so the setter, you know, really has a target to go at your hand. Stanford uh, lost the opening set Friday night to Oregon State and uh, came out and we're not their normal selves. They start a little slow today. As you see, uh, Stanford's won the last 11 meetings with Oregon. And as I mentioned a moment ago, Oregon hasn't won since 2011. That is perfectly placed as McClure gets the kill. McClure, McClure, such a smart player right here. She knows she's not going to be able to really crush it, so she kind of dials it down with a little roll, some finesse. Kate Formico with a service error, and Oregon moves back in front by two. Formico, the cousin of four-time Olympic beach volleyball medalist in Stanford Hall of Famer, Kerry Walsh Jennings. Uh, McClure into the net, hit the pin, point Oregon. Sam, what I'm seeing right away, this is a perfect start for Oregon. What they're doing is they're pressuring Stanford. They are keeping the ball alive so Stanford's not able to put it away on that first swing. And there's a huge wall up at the net, and McClure gets stuffed straight down. Willow Johnson says, get that out of here. Johnson with a stuff block and it prompts a timeout from Stanford. The Ducks have started very strong, up 13 to nine in the opening set. Crafted sheets for a well lived life. Parachute. Get your first two pairs of leggings for just $24. Think that cute can't be powerful, that a floral legging can't also be functional, that a pink outfit can't actually be built for a fight. And if I look cute, I must be less competition. Cute can be deceiving. Maybe I like it that way. Get your first two pairs of leggings for just $24 only at athletics.com. Women's College Volleyball is brought to you by Nissan. Innovation that excites. And Carl's Jr. and Hardy's. Find your favorite full flavored all-star meals starting at just five bucks. Uh, some beautiful sights from yesterday here on Pre-Trail, the historic running trail uh, founded by the legendary Steve Prefontaine, who is a, a local legend here and in the world of track. In fact, you know, Dane, I cover the sport of tennis. Wimbledon we consider to be the most sacred ground in the sport of tennis. Well, you'd have to say that here in Eugene, Oregon, it has that feel of track and field. Hayward Field, one of the most historic tracks here, and of course, Nike was started here as Prefontaine. Phil Knight's presence is all over 
this university, but uh, you really feel the history and the tradition as far as track and field is all around this town. It's called Track Town USA. Stanford coming out of the timeout. Let's see if they can side out. That's who you'd want to get the swing, but Plummer missed. We saw August Rasky make the dig. And what Oregon's doing, as I mentioned earlier, they're not allowing Stanford to get the kill on the first contact. They're making them work a little harder, and that's where the errors are starting to pop up. McClure is blocked again by Johnson. Johnson combining that time with Lauren Page. Johnson had huge matches earlier in the season against Texas and Nebraska, two of the traditional powerhouses in this sport. And tooling the block is Holly Campbell, side out Stanford. The biggest lead that the Ducks have had today. It's just been reduced down to five. But this Oregon team is a scrappy group. Last weekend, because of some suspensions and other issues, they only had six players available against Utah and took Utah to four sets, lost the fourth set 25-23. So they, they are a fired up group. And out of the middle, Lauren Page connects. Lauren Page getting up quick. This is what I mean. You want to be up in the air for your setter, and the setter just shoots that ball. Difficult for the block to set up, and that ball hits the floor. Oregon uh, had a huge win earlier this year against Minnesota. That was on September 8th, and there's Plummer a little off speed, getting it to go down. That's what makes Plummer so effective, the power and the finesse. The only player, first player in history, actually, to back up National Freshman of the Year with National Player of the Year, the sophomore year. I think we'll be seeing her in a Team USA jersey at some point in her life. Willow Johnson with the kill. We've seen her on the blocking schemes a lot, but this time getting the point for Oregon with the kill. That's her second of the match. Johnson averages three per set. Nunna Miller back to serve. First freshman starter at Libero since the legendary Amanda Benson here at Oregon. And Alade gets the kill for Stanford. Alade, All-American honorable mention a year ago. It's 347, very reliable in that middle position. She'll be Dr. Alade at some point. A human biology major, wants to be an orthopedic surgeon. A shadowed an orthopedist last summer for the summer. Van der Leyen. she's been unstoppable on that left side, Dan. Yeah, she just has such a nice fluid motion approach and quick arm swing. Even with two blockers in her face, that quick arm swing allows her to get around it quickly. Oregon up by six against the number two ranked team in the country. Stanford's number one in the RPI. Vanderwaite again. <laughs> I love that little joust up at the net. Vanderwaite and Plummer going at it right there. And Kevin Hambly has seen enough trailing by seven to Oregon, who is really on fire. So the Ducks prompt Stanford to take another timeout. Uh, Willow Johnson has certainly been a big story for Oregon in this match so far. Johnson with two kills. She's got two blocks, no errors. And as I mentioned, she is the daughter of Hall of Fame baseball pitcher Randy Johnson. And this is what she's looked like today. Well, she puts up. Huge block, being a lefty, just like her father, is a little unorthodox. You don't see in volleyball, you don't have a lot of lefties coming at you. So with that, in addition to her athletic ability, she has been extremely successful. Obviously, as you mentioned, uh, both lefties, uh, her dad, Randy, 6'10", the big unit. And Willow is listed as 6'3". Her dad, a Hall of Famer, second all-time in strikeouts in Major League Baseball history, most by a left-handed pitcher. Trails only the great Nolan Ryan. What a start for Oregon. 
Oregon swept the Bears here on this court Friday night, hitting uh, 368, the Cal Bears. Four players were in double-digit kills, but Stanford Dane is the ultimate test for anyone in the Pac-12. And as I said at the top of the show, Oregon has that signature win against Minnesota early in the year when I believe Minnesota was in the number one spot at the time. And so they can step up and play at an extremely high level. Coach Ulmer told me it's all about consistency and playing at a high level. And right now they're doing exactly that. That's Matt Ulmer. He's the head coach at Oregon now in his second season as head coach. Was uh, named the permanent head coach last November just before the NCAA tournament. He's a player's coach. Fun to watch in practice. He gets out there and he plays with his players, shows them what to do himself. Alade. Stanford right now having to work for their points. Nothing coming easy. It's either being deflected at the net as a blocker or the back line defenders are getting that ball up in the air. Vander White up. Cuts it too much like Stanford. So Vander White went for an extreme angle. And that ball ends up wide out of bounds. When you hit that ball angle, there's not a lot of real estate. If you make a little error, it ends up out of bounds. Stanford back to within five. Little missed time jump by Stone. Rasky will set her again. And this time, it's a successful set and kill. Veronica Stone on the right side. Really hitting the ball high off the block. Here's a good look at it off that one foot, that back set, getting up and deflecting for the tool. Vander White keeps it alive. Hint saves it. Oh boy! That was a gut buster. You could feel it. Boom! Veronica Stone putting that ball away. Her and Rasky having a couple shots at that. That one executed perfectly. Oregon, four points from taking the opening set. And a net violation on Oregon. So point Stanford. Stanford trailing by six here deep in the first set. Morgan Hintz, one of the best Libros in the country. Uh, a psych major inspired by her brother Louie who has severe autism. She wants to work with kids with special needs at some point in her life. Some sort of occupational or physical therapy. Fitzmorris had plenty of time. Nice dig by Testai. And finally put away by Van Sickle, her fourth kill. Yeah, Brooke Van Sickle right there, getting a little cagey and creative, seeing that there's no way to get through that block, so she open hand tips it and uses the block out of bounds. She's on the beach team, Dane, and uh, she definitely plays indoor like a beach player. Covers a lot of court. Out of the middle, that is long. Oregon wanted a touch, and they're going to get it. It was touched by Stanford, according to the up judge, so point Oregon. Yeah, immediately when Oregon hit this ball, they believed that there was a touch and not going to get a challenge out of Coach Hamblin. Service error by Stone, side out Stanford. Oregon is two points from claiming the opening set. There's a look at Kevin Hamley. Kevin in his second season at Stanford after replacing the legendary John Dunning, one of the bright young coaches in volleyball. He was the national coach of the year at Illinois back in 2011. Van Sickle again. It is set point Oregon. Wow, I love Van Sickle's game. At five foot nine, he's got a great vertical leap and plays with all sorts of confidence. Lauren Page 
Edwards ends the opening set. And these Ducks who had to get up early in the morning for this one have made the most of this hot start. And look at that stat. They have not lost a match this year when winning the opening set. But they are playing the number two ranked team in the country. Upset in the making. We'll find out in a moment. Veronica Stone led the way for Oregon at the end of that set. Number seven in yellow as Oregon takes the first set against second-ranked Stanford. And an interesting story about Stone. She comes from quite the athletic pedigree. Her dad, Ron, spent 13 seasons in the NFL as an offensive guard and is now a coach. Her brother, Ron Jr., plays football at Washington State. They beat Oregon yesterday in college football. And her sister, Rana, is on the Oregon track and field team as uh, she throws the shot and the javelin and of course Ronica a star on the volleyball team she wants to go Plus, so uh, Ronica Stone, quite an accomplished young woman, wants to go into broadcasting, and she certainly has the enthusiasm <laughs> for it. <laughs> so, Sam, what's with all the R's? I mean, Rona, Ron, yeah, Ron I was Jr., Ronica. I actually was thinking about you. I know you and you guys <laughs> just had your first baby, um, but you could have gone with Dane Jr. and then Dana, because <laughs> if you notice, they've got Ron Jr. and Rana with that theme yeah, for sure. Ronica, yeah. It's interesting. She uh, leads the cheers over there on the sideline when she's not in and then uh, backs it up on the court with a spectacular, dynamic arm. She is a powerful player. And Maria Taylor was uh, very complimentary of Ronica after she spent, she actually was on game day with her and then shattered her on the sideline. So here we go. Oregon hasn't lost this season when they win the first set. And Johnson strikes right away. What you have to watch out for for this Stanford team, I've seen them really come together and turn it on. We were questioning, you know, how would the players respond to this early morning match? 11 a.m. local here on the Pacific Coast. And I'll tell you what, Oregon ready to roll this morning. Stanford still trying to heat things up and McClure with a great stuff block there. Not accustomed to starting before noon. Most matches are in the evening. Sure, Sunday games are sometimes at 1 or 2 in the afternoon, but 11 a.m., a very early start. So we uh, definitely monitoring, you know, how they would respond. Especially with the match times typically being at night, as you mentioned, sometimes you get an afternoon match on a Sunday, but th this is early. I'm impressed with the crowd that's here as well. Hits keeps it alive. Fitzmorris down the line, kill. Love that hit right there by Fitzmorris. You know, her first two years, Fitzmorris was a middle blocker, and now she's moved to kind of that utility player. The majority on the right side in that opposite position, but she will hit on the left side out of the back row. She can do it all. A national player of the year coming out of high school. Her brother's on the basketball team at Stanford. Service ace. And Stanford takes a 3-2 lead behind the serve of Kate Formico. It's her 10th ace of the season. Big kill that time by Vanderweide. I love how Lindsey Vanderweide closes on the ball. Looks like it's maybe going to be too quick, but all of a sudden, her last two steps, we call that the step close, that quick right left, and then she's able to really snap on top of the ball, missing that serve and giving it back to Stanford. Vanderweide, a senior from uh, Turlock, California, plays six rotations all the way around. Fifth player in Oregon history with a thousand kills and a thousand digs. In fact, there's only 10 other players nationally that can say they have a thousand kills and a thousand digs. 
serve is good. McClure gets it off the tape. And that's her eighth ace of the season. McClure on the Pac-12 All-Freshman team last year and was an honorable mention All-American. Point Oregon. As once again, it is Van Sickle, only 5'9", Dane, but she is, she plays so much taller than that. Yeah, she really does. She has a great vertical leap, and like I said, a very quick arm swing. It's hard to stop. Oh, look at this set. That's out of bounds, yeah. and trying to take a chance. You know, when you're out of system like that, the ball is being set from off the back court. Sometimes you just go for it, especially when you have the type of weapons that Stanford does. Veronica Stone now back to serve. It's a beautiful set by Gray and the kill by Campbell. Campbell on the back slide. We saw Veronica Stone doing this quite a bit in the first set. Off that one foot, that back slide. So quick, difficult, especially in a one-on-one -on -one blocking situation. Anything surprising you in this match, Dane? Oh, wow. McClure gets hit in the face. Out of the back row attack from Vanderweide. Well, she didn't expect that one. This is a little, we'll call this a tracer. It's hit really flat, no topspin on it, and it just surprises McClure in the back. She shakes it right off, though. I, I want to get you to address that, Dane, in terms of what's happening here that you didn't expect. Well, Oregon coming out so quickly. We know that they have the weapons. I mentioned it earlier. The number one and number two recruiting classes you're getting to watch right here from 2016. And so the weapons are there for Oregon. It's about consistency. And I think they've used this home court advantage in this early morning crowd to kind of stun Stanford. Watch Stanford, though, tighten it up. And Sickle. I mean, she could have walked it over there any better. What a perfect attack. We keep talking about Van Sickle. It's that quick arm swing. Look how she gets off the net, gets prepared, and then the big double arm lift and crushes it right over the side of Catherine Plummer's shoulder. She rotates back to serve. Well, that's textbook there. What a good receive that allowed Gray to make a nice set and Plummer with a finish. Yeah, you'll hear us talk about being in system or out of system. It's so important on that first contact that the ball is passed to the setter so that you can run your entire arsenal of offense. Plummer serving Stanford up one now, trying to tie this match. And Johnson just had too much time. Willow Johnson now with four kills off eight swings. One error, so her hitting percentage 375. It's like a batting average in baseball. Fitzmorris terminates for Stanford. I think another thing that, that not really surprising but you're looking at number 16, Oregon, against number two. But you can tell there's no real intimidation. The confidence on the Oregon side is extremely high, and they expect to win. Oregon, uh, just watching them in practice yesterday, it's a very tight-knit group. They had one of the top recruiting classes in the nation come in this year. And the new coach, Matt Ulmer, in his second season. Matt, known as a player's coach, signed a four-year contract last November. There's an ace. He coaches the Beats team as well here. His mom, Leanne, is the head women's coach at Carthage College just out of Chicago, and she just picked up her 500th win in her coaching career. So coaching runs in the family for Matt Ulmer. Matt went to Carthage for undergrad. Kill by McClure. <laughs> <laughs> McClure makes it look so easy. You know, McClure is just a sophomore, and I'll tell you what, there are so many weapons on Stanford, but she finds a way yeah. to make a difference. Good serve by Formico. 
And we've got a net violation on Stanford. So point Oregon. Nothing going Stanford's way so far today. Oregon with a one point lead now. That's the touch of the net. Four with a tip. Nice pancake by Tastai. Van Sickle going up there with the trees and getting the point. You know, Van Sickle may have gotten that kill at the end, but it's all about Tastad's pancake. Look at that full extension with the right hand. Hand flat on the floor, and that ball pops up perfectly to keep the ball alive for Oregon. And I think we're going to get a challenge on that actual dig, which looked very clean from our angle. Here's a look at uh, Kevin Hamley, the Stanford head coach. Uh, let's take a look at the pancake. Pancake for obvious reasons, why we call it that in volleyball. Hand flat out on the court, it's below the ball. We can freeze it right there. You see how the ball is touching the ground? That probably will be ruled to the floor and point for Stanford because no part of the ball can cleanly touch. You have to get that pan completely in between the ball and the floor, and you can know in that still frame, beautiful angle right there, that it hit the ground. What do you think, Sam? I from seeing that re replay, I agree. When I saw it in real time, I thought she had it. Yeah. That was good work, guys. Yeah. Get that replay. And if the official sees the same thing we do, I, I think as much as I'm reluctant to, I'm going to agree with you. <laughs> oh, a replay. Oh. So inconclusive? I don't know. So we will replay the point. Neither team is happy with that decision, by the way. Both coaches are up. Not very thrilled with that decision. I think they're going to correct this. This is, shouldn't be a replay. It should be point for Stanford if that ball was ruled down. As Kevin as Hamley's actually talking with Matt Ulmer. They're uh, talking <laughs> to each other about that call. And now Stanford is going to be awarded the point. Yeah, what happened there is Nikki Cathol, the second referee, signaled wrong with the replay. The ball was ruled to have hit the ground. Therefore, you have to award it to Stanford. Now, if Oregon were challenging that and it was called on the ground already and Oregon were to win that challenge, then you would have to replay because the play would have been stopped prematurely. I, I know we showed the head coach's reaction, but when that was ruled a replay, Stanford assistant Aaron Lindsay jumped up <laughs> and was the, the most boisterous about that's not right. Yeah, yeah I mean, and eventually they uh, they changed it. There's still some discussion over the scores table, though. So we've had there's Aaron Lindsay. She was an All-American at the University of North Carolina. Tar Heel who was with Kevin Hamley at Illinois and now on the staff here at Stanford. Yeah, they're uh, sisters Lindsay Berg, by the way, the uh, setter for the Olympic team for several Olympic games. McClure is going to serve. The point went to Stanford after all of that. The call was overruled, changed. We're tied at 11. Service error by McClure. What I like about that, that interchange was that the referees took their time and they got the call correct. And as a player, that's exactly what you want. I 100% agree. And I think that's pretty common in volleyball. They, they really want to get it right and take the time to do it. This replay system is new to the sport, so there's still some things being worked out. Plummer with the kill for Stanford, and they need her, Dane, to be more of a factor. Yeah, Plummer has been a little bit quiet here this morning and maybe starting to heat up. She knows she's a leader out here and she knows what she's capable of doing. And she just has to start to turn it up. And her big thing is leading by example. And Sickle again tools the block. I got to find out her vertical, Dane. I mean, she just hangs in the air. I have parents all the time ask me, how tall do you need to be to play college volleyball? And there's really no clear cut answer. I mean, she's only 5'9 and she's a fantastic outside hitter. 
I completely agree with you. There's really no answer to that question. And the thing is, these coaches, they want athletes. If you are 5'8", up to 6'5", they want you to be well-rounded, be able to hit, to pass, to block, to do everything out there, and they're going to find a spot on the court for you. Well, Jenna Gray, certainly an athlete, 6'1", the runner-up in the NCAA championships in Javelin last year and a first-team All-American in volleyball. Good save by Rasky. Point Stanford, that went wide. I, I love the communication, though, on both sides of the net, Dane. These teams really do a lot of talking to each other in the rallies and pushing each other out of the way. It's, it's fun to see the chemistry on the court from both sides. Well, you have your responsibilities. A lot of times, you might not notice, but a free ball situation, you're going to have your best ball control player knock other players out of the way to get to the ball. Good hustle by Gray to keep that alive for Stanford. This has got to go over, and it does. Fitzmorris ends the point for the Cardinal. <laughs> Van Sickle did all that she could in that one. A little bit out of breath at the end, ending up in a one-on-one -on -one <laughs> situation. She's not crying, she's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, slipped down, and uh, at least she can laugh at herself. <laughs> Rasky, with a good sense of humor, one of the best setters in the Pac-12, had trouble getting up. Whoops. <laughs> We're laughing because she's laughing. Not getting enough cash back with that credit card? Turn to the nerds. Want to invest that bonus? Turn to the nerds. Looking for the perfect mortgage? Turn to the nerds. Oops, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> hey there, need a travel rewards card? Turn. Auto loan? Two. Want a lower interest rate? The nerds. <clears throat> the experts at NerdWallet make it easy to make smart money moves. Compare credit cards, mortgages, savings accounts, and more at nerdwallet.com. Oh my god. We surprised these real Just Fab members. Do you see this right now? <laughs> these are so amazing. By making their online boutiques into real stores. These are all just so completely me. Just Fab just knows what I like. They totally get me, totally know my style. And then they show me things that I didn't even know I would like. Go to JustFab.com for thousands of styles every month for just $39.95 plus free shipping. Right now, get your first pair of shoes for just $10. Only at JustFab.com. Well, Dane, while we were away, a double contact was called against Stanford in that last rally, and so Oregon now has the serve and got the point as well. So Stanford leads 15-13. And uh, they are not happy about that call. Jenna Gray and Morgan Hentz were over talking to the up judge. Excuse me, it's 14 all now as a result of the double contact. The score was 15-13 when we went into the break. And uh, the double contact was called during that timeout. Gray pleaded the case for the Cardinal, but was unsuccessful in her argument. So we're tied at 14. It's been a pretty intense match. And Plummer takes out her frustration on the ball. Did you see that pass by Morgan Hentz? Just putting it right on the numbers perfectly. And that's how you run a clean offense. Timeout on the court, a scheduled timeout. We want to remind you that our e our week seven Monday night football matchup has Saquon Barkley, Odell Beckham, and the Giants in Atlanta to take on Julio Jones, Matt Ryan, and the Falcons. 8:15 Eastern Time, 5:15 Pacific on ESPN. Also simulcast on ESPN2 in Spanish and available on the ESPN app. Coverage starts with Monday Night Countdown at 6 Eastern. Here inside Matthew Knight Arena, one of the most picturesque courts and all the sports they play basketball in here as well it is a beautiful facility on the campus of the University of Oregon both of these schools share incredible beauty around their campus and everything at the University of Oregon I can tell you is state of the art this is a first-class university that gives its student athletes the best facilities to perfect their craft and Oregon 13 and 6 this year, 6 and 3 
in the Pac-12, tied for third place with UCLA, trying to beat Stanford for the first time since 2011. And we're starting to get to that point in the season, Dane, where we're talking about the NCAAs and who's going to host regionals and where your RPI is, where your ranking is, your quality wins. Stanford, in my mind, really does not want to lose this match, not just because of the fact that they've lost, but right now they're sitting pretty to host a regional. They're number one in the RPI, number two in the rankings. And so there's a lot on the line for Stanford. No, oh, it's huge. And, and look at the implications for Oregon. They stand at 25 on the RPI. If they could take down Stanford, who is number one, that could do some huge things for them. But Stanford getting better, as I said, every match. Right now, they're being challenged. Looking nationally, BYU is undefeated in the number one ranked team in the nation. Stanford number two. Minnesota had a big win against Nebraska last night. Johnson on the attack point, Oregon. Stanford has to look out right now. The momentum seemed to turn up at the end of that first set. And you're kind of sensing it right now, the confidence that Oregon's playing with. Nunna Miller back to serve, a freshman who starts in that critical libero position. Alade with the kill out of the middle, quick swing. Tammy Alade right there. Wow, going against the grain. We call that going away from the body. It's easy to go cross body, very natural, but to go away from your body can be a challenge when hitting the ball. Stanford up one. Hence with the dig. Plummer out of the back row is blocked. Stone and Johnson combine. Wow. Veronica Stone up at the net. Such great technique. Up, pressing over. Her and Johnson time it perfectly, shoulder to shoulder. She is uh, one of the highest jumpers on the Oregon team in terms of uh, vertical leap. They track their vertical leaps every day. McClure with the kill on the left side for Stanford. And you can see the, the intensity now on the Stanford side of the net, playing with much more sense of purpose now. They dropped a set at Oregon State Friday night. They've done it here. Rasky with the dunk. She took it over herself, which you don't see the center do too often in volleyball. Yeah, I love that right there. Rasky getting up and just throwing it down. A very offensive-minded player as a setter. She had the rare triple-double in volleyball at Colorado two Fridays ago. Point Stanford. Rasky yeah. and that triple double 41 assists 11 digs and a career high 10 kills at Colorado and that is where she's from she's from Colorado Springs so that made it even more special for her it was the first triple double since 2001 for an Oregon player 17th in school history that's how rare that is yeah very rare some some players go you know an entire career and never get a triple double but as a setter you have that assist option as well as the digs and if you're offensive minded which she is 10 kills for a setter that's a that's a really high number overpass Campbell can't put it away Plummer is stuffed. Veronica Stone, a fortress. Veronica Stone starting to feel it. Look at her get hip to hip with Rasky and pressing over. Smile on her face. She's having a good time. Everything seems to be clicking. A face we may see on this network one day. She wants to be in broadcasting as we talked about earlier. There's Van Sickle continuing her good match. Van Sickle actually leads the Ducks in kills. Wow, Sam, a one-on-one -on -one situation. <laughs> you usually don't see the blocker winning there, especially at 5'9", Van Sickle playing huge. Plummer pushes it into the open court. Catherine Plummer now with six kills. The National Player of the Year from last year. Six kills today for Plummer, but she's had four errors. 
Stanford is a team hitting uh, 259 for the match, but 417 this set. That is long. And we haven't really talked about the hitting percentage that much, Dane, but because uh, but Oregon is lighting it up today, hitting 411 in this match against the number two team in the country. Yeah, they've been very consistent. 411 in the match are hitting 409 here in this current set, and they've been consistent. Well, uh, something that is really fun to watch. I encourage you to watch ESPN Basketball, a love story. It's our unprecedented 20 hour film that consists of more than 60 interconnected short stories. It continues Tuesday with episodes five and six starting at seven Eastern. They're streaming also on the app. So you can watch these things anytime you want. And I encourage you, that's a good watch. Basketball, a love story. If you want to see it live, Tuesdays at 7 Eastern, episodes 5 and 6. A lot of happy ducks here in Matthew Knight Arena. We got up early. This was an 11 a.m. start here on the West Coast. And there is a no shortage of enthusiasm in this building. Sam, you're talking about that hitting percentage in the first set. Stanford only hit 147, so that's very uncharacteristic. That number obviously coming up higher and higher each and every play right now. They just look a lot sharper here in this second set, hence the one-point lead. And Stanford is one of the best hitting teams in the nation. Uh, they've hit 311 on average this season. So the fans are fired up, trying to push the Ducks to a 2-0 lead in this best of five set match. Wilson serving. Raski put up a nice set. Stanford keeps it alive. Here's Plummer again. Point Stanford, Alade gets the kill. Rasky trying to get creative and throw that ball off of the block and out of bounds. The ball just didn't go wide enough. It still ended up in bounds. Here's a good look at it. She tries to tool the block, but just unsuccessful by a couple inches. Wilson serving. <laughs> and not anymore. There's that offensive setter that we talked about, Rasky. Going for it right there. She wanted that last play back where she didn't get the tool. She threw this down and knew it right away as she takes a stroll back to the service line. 21-20, Stanford up by one. And Plummer hammers it. Stanford trying to tie this match on the road against a team they have not lost to since 2011. Gray back to serve. Nice serve by Jenna Gray, an ace. Her 24th of the season. One of the best servers in the Pac-12. And a timeout, Oregon. I mentioned uh, Jenna Gray, uh, quite an athlete, not only a first-time All-American in volleyball, but a two-time All-American in the javelin. In fact, uh, she was the NCAA runner-up last year right here at Hayward Field in Oregon. So let's uh, compare the, the javelin throwing to her volleyball serve, Dane. Again, uh, she finished second in the NCAAs last year in the javelin. Now here's her volleyball serve. Yeah, with the javelin, you keep that straight arm, of course. With volleyball, the elbow kind of leads there, but very similar. And at the end of the day, what you're talking about is an extreme athlete that excels in just about anything that she participates in. Very similar motions there. There's that jump float serve, kind of mesmerizing in terms of trying to serve receive. And that's what Stanford is so good at. They step up when they need to, a three-point lead right now. And Jenna Gray is the leader of this team. You know, when Ajanaku graduated after the freshman year for this junior class, it was a question of who would take over as the leader. And you think maybe Catherine Plummer would be that leader, but Catherine Plummer leads by example. Yeah. This team is quarterbacked and run by Jenna Gray. Coach told me that she has really stepped up and taken charge of the leadership role. 
Gray is also a human biology major. Her dad, Brian, played baseball at Kansas. Her mom ran track at Kansas State. And her sister, Rachel, played volleyball at Virginia, so another athletic family. No surprise that a good javelin thrower is an excellent volleyball server. She's just come off her 24th ace of the season. How about this crowd? Hence with a nice dig. Nana Miller keeps it alive. That's out. Vanderweide is long, and it is set point Stanford. Stanford battling right now. That was quite a long rally. They hung in there, trying to stay within their game and take care of this set. Gray back to serve, trying to tie this match at a set apiece. Hence with another good dig. Vanderweide keeps it alive. Fitzmorris tried to cut it too sharply. Point Oregon, but it remains Stanford's set point. Morgan Hentz is all over. You know, we talk about her being such a great libero. Mm. It's she's so smart. She's almost taking notes. She hasn't let a sharp hit go down since halfway through the first set. She's quite a competitor, too. Gray tools the block. So Stanford wraps up the second set and has just tied this match at a set apiece. So we're tied at a set apiece. There's uh, one of the other members of the Oregon volleyball team. We're going to talk to you about Daniel Bixby when we come back. Momentum grab. Yeah, well, you know what? It's like a heavyweight fight. Oregon came out and really landed the first blow, kind of shocked Stanford, and I expected them to really get right back up in that second set and, and take care of business, and that's what they have done. Now things start to settle in. You're starting to learn tendencies and know what you're working with here this afternoon, and this is going to be a battle. This one could go five. Van Sickle serving her underway in the third set. That's a little too much serve. That's out. So Van Sickle, one of the few mistakes she's made tonight. Nine kills, only one hitting error, three digs and a block. And back to serve now is number 21. Sydney Wilson has her first degree black belt in Taekwondo. And get this, lettered in 11 different sports in high school. 11? I don't know if my high school had 11 sports. That's a lot. Some of them were volleyball, soccer. She's from Canada, so ski racing, ultimate frisbee, taekwondo, beach volleyball. Wow. That's pretty amazing and to go to school at the same time. Willow Johnson with the kill, and Oregon picks up its first point. There's a look at Sydney Wilson rotating out. Here's Brooke Nunnemiller, the first freshman to start at the Libro position since uh, All-American Amanda Benson. Coach Omer, in fact, calls her the most experienced player they have, even though she's a freshman because she's played at the international level and national level for so long on the junior national team. Good dig by McClure. Plummer struggling. That's what she wanted to do. She'll try again, I think. Collision in the back row between Van Sickle and Rasky. And after that scrappy rally, finally Stanford wins it. That's unfortunate for Oregon right there. They made some great plays. We're putting solid blocks up at the net and then to end this with an unforced error just out of bounds. That's very close, but you can tell it's about two inches wide. So you got to complete the play to get that point. Gray back to serve. Back 12 setter of the year last year. Off the slide, Stone. 
gets the kill. That's a perfect example. If you're a blocker and you don't seal the net, if you leave even just a couple of inches in between you and the net, as Plummer does right there, the ball ends up on your side. Here's a great look at it. It just squeaks right in between the player and the net. That's what we call sealing the net. Plummer needs to be just a couple inches closer, and that's a stuff block on the Oregon side. Stone now with four kills. And Oregon trailing by one here early in the third set. Service error. It's a 4-2 lead now for Stanford. Stanford has not dropped a Pac-12 match this year. The Cardinal comes in on a 15-match win streak. The only team to have beaten Stanford this year, BYU, which is still undefeated. Service error from Plummer. Before the match, I talked to Coach Hambly. He told me that three missed serves a set is about the number for him. So for a match, you know, nine or ten, so he wants his players putting pressure across the net every single time when they go to that back line. You know, you don't ever want to get into that groove where you're just serving the ball in. You want to be offensive-minded and know that you can score at any time from the back line, and that's the mental focus for Stanford. Coach Hamley yesterday in practice uh, stressing service aggression today, trying to get his team to serve aggressively. Hence, that's a good serve. Nunna Miller with a nice dig. Rasky again falling down. And then out of the back row, Vanderwein has somehow found an opening. Gosh, Rasky everywhere on the court. I love after she makes the set, she does a perfect roll. Look at this technique. <laughs> Rolls right out of the frame and gives her hitter, Vanderweide, an opportunity to get the kill. That's the sign of a great setter. August Rasky, not only offensive-minded, but really setting up her players well. A senior from Colorado Springs earlier this year in the upset of Minnesota had 66 assists, which was the most by a duck since 2012. She played on the uh, Nat, uh, U.S. Collegiate team last summer as well. Well, all of a sudden, the service errors are becoming more and more common. There have been a six for Oregon, five for Stanford. Kate Formico back to serve now. Stuffed. Page couldn't get it to go down. The Stanford block just too much. Yeah, McClure waited and pressed into the angle at the very last second, her and Campbell putting up a solid wall. Stanford has been among the top blocking teams in the nation all season. Hence tried to get under it, did not. It is point Oregon. You know, Morgan Hens can be a nightmare if you're a referee. Yeah. She always is going for the balls that are so close. That ball just hits the ground, but real time, it's hard to tell. But uh, the refereeing team has done a fantastic job of getting the right call. Page and Johnson combine point Oregon. Big block at the net for Oregon. Up, over, and pressing. That's how you want to do it every time. Stanford has outblocked Oregon statistically today, a six and a half to three. Nona Miller going to put up the set, and Johnson misses point Stanford. Okay, we've seen a couple of errors here in this third set by Johnson on the right side. She needs to rein that in, make sure she hits the court. If she's not able to get the kill, just keep it in. Give yourself another opportunity because Oregon's defense is playing solid. Johnson, six kills, three errors, four digs. Campbell has it dug by Vanderweide. Free ball for Stanford, and it is taken over by the setter, Gray, for the kill. Gray just seems to know when exactly to dump that ball. You don't want to do it too often if you're a setter. She times it just perfectly and catches Oregon this lead. She has a 296 hitting percentage when she does take it over. We've got a timeout on the court. Nine to six, Stanford leading it in the third.
How does Dove Men Plus Care antiperspirant protect you differently? This is soothing. It's comfortable. Dove goes on smoothly. You don't have to worry about it drying out your skin. Try Dove Men Plus Care, the only antiperspirant with 48 hour sweat protection and Dove's one quarter moisturizer technology. Tough on sweat, not on skin. KFC presents the new 10 piece chicken piece for only $19.99, featuring two large mashed potatoes and four biscuits with a whopping 10 pieces of chicken. Get it all for only $19.99 before it's gone. KFC, it's finger licking good. When you are a leader, standing still is not an option. On the field and off, we are a collective laboratory for change. Our campuses are all inspiring Our academic communities, cutting edge. Our athletic versatility, unprecedented. Over the past century, we have adjusted our winning formula and dominated through disruption. The dynamics of change is in our DNA. Pac-12, the Conference of Champions. Now look at the Oregon River serving as the backdrop of our scoreboard, which right now reads Stanford up 9 to 6 in the third set. We're tied at a set apiece in this best of five set match. We want to remind you that our week seven Monday night football football matchup will have the Giants taking on Atlanta. It's at 815 Eastern 515 Pacific on ESPN also simulcast on ESPN 2 in Spanish and available on the ESPN app coverage starts with Monday night countdown at six. It's the Giants and Falcons this week on Monday Night Football. Sunday afternoon volleyball going on here in Eugene, Oregon, Stanford and Oregon. Stanford, the number two ranked team in the country, number one in the RPI. Having a tough time with these Ducks. Back row attack from Vanderlei. Yeah, Vanderweide is effective for basically anywhere on the court. Of course, a six rotation player her whole career and looks so confident this senior year hitting from just about anywhere. And Sickle back to serve. She's tied her season high in kills today. That's 10. That's out. Solid block. That was the only real opening was right down that small alley down the line and just missed the distance. Van Sickle serving. She's actually has nine kills today. Vanderweide has ten. The only player in double digits on either team. Plummer is blocked. But somehow Stanford wins the rally. That's what happens when you have miscommunication right there. Johnson turning off the block. She doesn't know if a defender is coming to make the play right now or not. That's why it's important for the back row players to call her off or to tell her to take that ball. There was a little confusion and that resulted in the point for Stanford. The black belt serving Wilson. Nice little push over by Page. Man, she was up high. Got to know when to tip and when to power through. If you pick wrong, you'll get stuffed right back at you. But if you can continue to pick that right shot, you're going to become a lethal weapon on that outside. Nana Miller back to serve. She's been the starting libero for the U.S. Junior National Team the last three years. Every summer. Can't dig that out, however. Another big swing by Plummer. And Stanford extends its lead now to two. Yeah, I think Plummer might hit the heaviest ball in yeah. collegiate volleyball. It just sounds a little different. And a lot of times it, it just gets her out of trouble. The defender's in the right spot, but that thing's just coming way too quickly. She's also just a spectacular beach player. She's going to have her choice, play indoor, uh, overseas professionally, the national team or play on the beach, whatever she wants to do, the world is hers. Here's a look at her accomplishments. The first player in history to be freshman of the year and the national player of the year the following season. We've been talking about the family trees of these uh, players. So her dad, Kevin, played in the NFL. Her brother also was a volleyball player at the collegiate level. Stone with a kill. One of those many athletes that has the professional athletic pedigree. I really like that backslide for Veronica Stone. It's just, you can tell 
one of her favorite hits, and when it's clicking, it is so difficult to slow down. Service error, that is the seventh service error of the match by Oregon, and it spots Stanford a two-point advantage. Dave, what, what do you like about Plummer on the beach? Oh, she's smart. You can you can tell she's very, uh, as we get an ace serve right there, yeah. she chooses her shots wisely. That was a nice float serve. It had all sorts of movement. Even though she has the power to go through you almost every time, there's times when she sees a solid block, she tips the ball, so she's got the power, she's got the finesse. She is the whole package, no question about it. That's the voice of Dane Bland, Olympic gold medalist in beach volleyball. Both of these teams have beach programs. In fact, uh, the coach for Oregon does both. Matt Ulmer coaches indoor and beach volleyball. They're trying to uh, build an indoor beach facility here. That's on the plans. Fix Morris, tools the block, gets the kill for the Cardinal. And Stanford also, a strong beach program. They're coached by Andrew Fuller, great coach. And two programs, you know, Pac-12 is strong and the first conference to fully adopt beach volleyball. UCLA, the national champion this year in beach volleyball. Stone again. Stone, just a physical player at six foot two, so strong, jumps well, big wingspan, and she's able to hit that ball at a very high trajectory. Seven kills for Stone as she serves. A roll shot from McClure. McClure always impresses me. She comes up with shots that when she initially hits them, I'm thinking there's no way that ball's gonna go down, but she <laughs> sees exactly where the weak spot is on the other side of the net, and she seems to execute every time. That's a good way to put it. I have that same thought when I watch her. Oh, there's that oh. deep corner. <laughs> That time it's Jenna Gray going to the deep corner. We saw this shot earlier. See when the defense releases short, the back right corner is vulnerable and Gray knows that best. High volleyball IQ. There's high IQs all over this court. <laughs> Out of the back row. Nice attack. As Plummer with 11 kills now and Stanford has built a five-point lead. Let's take a look at that last play. And Stanford really starting to step up their game. This out of the backcourt, and it is Plummer on what we call the big, the back row quick. And a player like Plummer can really make that happen because of her height and her physicality, dangerous from basically anywhere on the court. You mentioned Plummer's height. She's 6'6". Six, six. Yeah. I mean, she is the total package. Again, we expect Plummer to possibly be uh, playing for Karch Karai on the Olympic team one day. I mean, this, that's a quality of player we're seeing in this match. There's several players out here that could be future Olympians. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and we showcased how strong the junior class is for Stanford with Jenna Gray as setter of the year. You got Morgan Hens as well in the backcourt and Adriana Fitzmorris who is moved from middle blocker to opposite. So Stanford absolutely stacked with talent. We're gonna be calling their names for many years to come. I guess my question though, Dane, more pertaining to this match is has Stanford been exposed in any way today? Are you seeing a, a vulnerability that maybe uh, we didn't know before this match? Well, no, not a weakness per se, but it's volleyball 101. If you can make it more difficult for a team to get the ball to the ground, you're going to cause some frustrations. And that's what Oregon has the ability to do. And that's what they have been doing. Not giving Stanford any easy points, fighting for every ball, putting the block in position. You're talking about two very well coached and disciplined teams with Hambly on the Stanford side and Ulmer on Oregon. This is an Oregon road trip for Stanford. They uh, lost the first set to Oregon State on Friday night and came back. Formico hits Vanderweide with that serve. And so another ace for Formico. She's had two aces in this match. Fifth ace for Stanford as a team. And then Sickle is stuffed. 
You had Campbell and Gray over on that right side. Again, Stanford, an incredible blocking team, one of the top in the nation the entire season. They're on a 5-0 run, make it 6-0, another ace for Formico. What's making her serve so impactful, Dane? Well, the bottom's dropping out. As soon as it crosses the net, the bottom's dropping out. So it's just dying right in front of Vanderweide. And Vanderweide has rotated back, so she's not passing this rotation now after a couple of aces. An overpass sets up nicely for Campbell. Right now, Sim, you're starting to see how crucial it is, that first contact, that passing rotation, and putting the ball in the right spot. And right now, Stanford has found a weakness in Oregon, and they're running off some points. I have been fascinated with Van Sickle's ability to have such an impact in this match. She has played exceptionally well today and now has 10 kills, which ties her season high. Stanford well out in front, 21-13. Campbell again getting the kill. Yeah, here's the hard part. Stanford, we just talked about them. So many weapons coming at you. And, you know, the Ducks, they're loaded as well with Lindsey yeah. Vandeweide and, of course, Veronica Stone and August Rasky as their setter, who's very offensive-minded. But Stanford, they just keep coming at you, keep coming at you. You cannot let up at all. And right now, Stanford frustrating Oregon a bit. Stanford returned five All-Americans this year from the team last year that went to the national semifinals. Another ace for the Cardinal and McClure specifically. The overall athletic program at Stanford uh, having a very successful season. Women's soccer, number one in the nation, defending NCAA champions. The men's soccer team has won three straight titles. Page, too much for Hintz. Yeah, you mentioned Stanford, always so successful. They, of course, with Penn State, the winningest institution in the history of women's volleyball with seven titles apiece. Penn State and Stanford, the only two teams that have made every NCAA tournament. Nice save by Vander Weide and Johnson. Oh, I love it. That was creative. But Vander Weide anticipated that shot and she took off running. It's her dig that allows this rally to continue. And then Johnson having the wherewithal to go over immediately when Stanford's defense had not set up yet. So very smart play right there. And right now being down by eight points, if you're Oregon, don't look up at the scoreboard. Just try to get back to the type of volleyball that you were playing in set number one. It's gonna be a daunting task to come back right here and win this set. So don't focus on it, but it's very important that you're ready to go when set number four begins. Stanford is two points away from the fourth set. And Sickle back to serve. Good dig by Rasky. And Johnson again. Man, that, that's like a pitch her dad would have thrown. I mean, she hit the strike zone. That was a perfect location. Perfect location, not a lot of heat, almost like a changeup. This ball, not a lot of top spin, just off speed, perfectly placed. Johnson, if you're just joining us, uh, the daughter of Hall of Famer Randy Johnson, the big unit. Good hustle by the Ducks. Campbell is blocked. And Plummer, too much to handle. It is set point Stanford. Solid rally there on both sides of the net, and that ball kind of just weasels down, and Johnson could not fish it out. And Stanford looking like they are going to take this third set. A lot of uh, perspiration being wiped up today. Uh, the conditions outside are a perfect autumn day, but it is humid. And the uh, players are sweating. This is, a, this is a grinding match, too. This has been fun to watch. 
As I mentioned, uh, the, the Pac-12, the Big Ten sort of lead the way in women's volleyball at the Division I level. The Pac-12 with seven teams currently raked in the top 25. Johnson tools the block, and Oregon is not finished. I like what I see from Oregon right now. Instead of just letting this set get away from them, they're fighting back, and they're trying to get back to that high-level volleyball that we've seen from them this afternoon. And at least to try to carry some momentum into that next set, as you mentioned earlier. Plummer is long on that attack, but it was touched. And so the point goes to Stanford and therefore the set. Catherine Plummer, she's uh, laughing because she got fortunate. She was gonna miss that kill and it was touched by a duck. So Stanford, the number two ranked team in the country, up two sets to one against Oregon. This new 10 piece chicken feast. Well, again, uh, it's a tranquil sink from the Oregon River. And Stanford Dane has come back from a set down and has a 2-1 advantage heading into this fourth set. Catherine Plummer is a player that mesmerizes us with her power and her high volleyball IQ, and she has not disappointed today. Yeah, and so much confidence. She has all the shots in the world, the sharp angle, the down the middle. She can hit out of the back row. The back row quick, we call it the big, and she just brings an energy to the court. Coach Hambly told me that she likes to lead by example, and she's doing exactly that this afternoon. 13 kills on 34 attempts, just four airs. She's hitting 265, and she's got Stanford back to hitting 295. The interesting thing, Oregon still out hitting Stanford, hitting 360 on the match. That is strong. Stanford is used to hitting at a high percentage. Oregon came in hitting 262 in Pac-12 play. So Stanford hoping to get out of the state of Oregon 2-0. They came from a set down to beat Oregon State on Friday night. Lost the first set here in Eugene. And it'll be McClure serving to start the fourth set in this best of five set match. Vanderweide is blocked. Point Stanford. Stanford, the big difference over the last set was of course they're serving from the back line they just started serving just bb's over the net causing all sorts of trouble for the serve receivers of oregon there's another tough serve and that ball hit out of bounds that's what happens if you don't pass the ball to the right spot you get in all sorts of trouble right now service aces stanford has seven as opposed to just one for oregon Oregon is a challenging whether there was a touch on that swing. She went through a lot of arms on that cross court attack. And Coach Ulmer issuing a challenge. Let's see if we can see something here. That's going to be very difficult to be able to see if one of the fingers. Let's see uh, if Campbell touched it. Yeah, it looked like Campbell's the only option. Here's a great view. Campbell, uh, three in red. She's uh, right there on the left side of your screen in air. I think the ball passes before the block even gets into position. So there goes. Oh, it is hard to yeah. tell. You easily look for the fingers moving there. And the, I, I, didn't, I couldn't see any definite yeah. finger moving. The initial call was out, and that's important to note because they have to find conclusive evidence to turn that over. And remember, each team has three challenges per match. You get an additional challenge in the fifth set. And it doesn't matter whether you're right or wrong on the challenge, you just get that number. So three correct challenges, you're still out of challenges even if they're three incorrect. It's it's just too difficult to see on that, and I believe it is Stanford's point. So they ruled uh, that first call was correct, no touch. McClure back to serve. Stanford up two nothing to start the fourth. 
Now, Dana, as McClure's looking over at the bench, what is she seeing when fans see her look over at the bench before she serves? Is she being told where to serve? Yeah, usually that is a location. There's six locations on the court, and a lot of times it is just where to serve the ball because who's telling her that? Whose responsibility is well, it? it changes. Sometimes, sometimes the head coach will be doing it, sometimes an assistant coach. It can change at time, and usually you see the clipboard up to shield the call from the opposition. Right now, Kevin Hamley up at the net, giving his setter, Jenna Gray, some instruction as well. Good receive by Vander Weide, and Johnson blocked by Plummer. Good dig by Van Sickle. Hence saves it. And Plummer picks up the point for the Cardinal. Tenacious defense by Stanford, continuing to get that ball up in the air and provide opportunities to use their firepower on the outside in Plummer. Plummer now has 15 kills. That leads uh, everyone in this match. Highest, next highest is 10. Net move, but no violation. Page gets the kill. Page getting up quickly and getting that ball to the floor as she checks out. She took care of her responsibilities there. She's a six foot middle. She moved to the outside for the first 10 matches because of some personnel issues, but is back in her comfort zone in the middle. Plummer, that's just too much power, tooling the block, and Plummer's got two straight kills. It has been a good start for the Cardinal as they try to wrap up this road trip to Oregon with two wins and remain undefeated in the Pac-12. Oh, there's Catherine Plummer in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And why I note that, it is difficult to get the stuff block in a one-on-one -on -one situation, but Stanford here up six to one and absolutely dominating. It took them a while, they've turned it up. They're up two sets to one over Oregon. Some job boards give you tons of the wrong resumes. That's not smart. Then there's smart. ZipRecruiter finds people with the right skills, education, and experience for your job and actively invites them to apply so you get qualified candidates fast. That's why ZipRecruiter is rated number one by employers in the U.S. ZipRecruiter, the preferred job site of college sports fans everywhere. Try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com easy. The mechanics of motion. Every great student athlete has them. An intuitive understanding of forward progress. The intelligence and skill to shift directions on a dime. Like nowhere else, the Pac-12 has mastered the dynamics of change. We balance athletic accomplishment with academic excellence. It's why the world tunes in to watch our teams. And it's what makes us the Conference of Champions. Well, Sports Center is tonight at 11 Eastern with Bucci and Maine. They'll have reactions and analysis from the Bengals Chiefs. Plus, Boomer is back this week with week seven highlights and a conversation with Saquon Barkley. Sports Center, it is at 11 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Here in Eugene, Oregon, on a, a beautiful fall day outside, it is Stanford coming from behind now with a 6 1 lead here in the fourth set after dropping the first set against a very inspired Oregon team. Good save by Gray. And Johnson gets the kill. Johnson getting her number called quite often, putting that ball right in the center of the court. And right now it's just a matter of consistency and serve reception for Oregon. That is what has tailed off since that first set. Willow Johnson now in double digits. She's got 10 kills, four blocks as well. It's another smart shot by Plummer. Took a little off it. 
Yeah, she just knows where to go. 17 kills now for Catherine Plummer. We talked earlier that, actually, Sam, you said she needs to get a little more involved, yeah. a little quiet in the first set. And sometimes you do that. You go away from the typical superstar and work in everybody else, but Plummer has asserted herself. Oh, wow, what a save by McClure. And Stanford wins the rally. McClure totally sacrificing in the backcourt to keep that ball alive and then give credit to her teammates. Ready for the quick one, the little double pump fist to save that by Jenna Gray. That was an interesting, unorthodox <laughs> set. And an ace by Gray. She'll take it. <laughs> Funny expression on her face as she knew she got a little lucky with that serve. But Gray, one of the best servers in the country. Very fortunate. <laughs> and relieved, yeah. Didn't mean to do it, but I'll take it. When your work takes you away, what you bring with you matters. Away makes luggage that works for you, that keeps you moving, keeps you powered, and is yours to keep for life. So you can focus on the big picture and the little moments that get you there. Try any suitcase for 100 days at awaytravel.com. The original idea for this commercial was to show a step-by-step -step breakdown of how these Warby Parker glasses were made. From designing them in-house, to creating the cellulose acetate, to hand assembling the frame. But we kind of got held up on this beautiful shot of them getting hand buffed on a polishing wheel. Mesmerizing, isn't it? Anyway, our glasses start at $95, including prescription lenses. Hmm. Try five pairs for free at WarbyParker.com. Back here on Matthew Knight Arena, Stanford starting to heat up, and it is their big superstar, Catherine Plummer, showing finesse, showing power, showing how to get it done. Look at this stuff block, pressing over the net. The National Player of the Year, her sophomore year, continues to improve. She's got 17 kills this afternoon, hitting 325. And there you see it. Started a little slow, but starting to catch fire. She knows when to step up her game. Stanford as a team has eight swings this set. Five of those have resulted in kills, no errors. That's a hitting percentage of 625 and a good use of the timeout there as Vander Weide sides out for Oregon come down to serving pressure. Right now, Oregon has to turn up the pressure. Stanford a little too comfortable passing the ball. And Stanford has eight aces to one for Oregon. Fitzmorris with the kill. And Stanford's gonna get to serve again. And it took quite a long time, but finally Stanford is leading in terms of hitting percentage, hitting 327 as opposed to Oregon's 314 on the match. Pence keeps it alive. Little back set for Fitzmorris. Pence again. Alade with a quick swing. Puts it down for the Cardinal. That's her eighth kill. And Hintz now with 16 digs. How about Hintz? She is everywhere. I think she made a decision about midway through the second set that no outside hitter was going to hit <laughs> angle and get the kill. She has stepped in, taken away that sharp angle from Oregon, and it really has paid big dividends. She wants to touch the ball. There's a kill by Fitzmorris. Yesterday in practice, uh, Kevin Hamley looked at Hintz one time and said, Morgan, Mo, or they call her Mo. Mo, you okay? You all right? She said, I just got to play better, coach. And I'm watching her thinking, well, what was wrong with how you were playing before? <laughs> that's, that's a sign of a true champion. Always trying to improve, always wanting to get better on each and every play. Another errant pass for Oregon. And right now, things 
falling apart a bit. This is not the same squad that we saw in the first set. The focus, the determination, but more importantly, they're just not able to execute. And of course, you got to give credit to Stanford for turning it up a little bit, but I know Oregon can play much better than they presently are. Well, that was the second service ace of the day for Catherine Plummer to go along with her 17 kills, three digs, and one block. And there's an error, but again, uh, Stanford's committed to serving aggressive today, and they followed through on that commitment. And Stanford with nine aces to just one for Oregon. And the Cardinal up by nine. Malade again. Malade uh, originally born in Nigeria, grew up in Canada as a human biology major and aspires to be an orthopedic surgeon. Shadowed an orthopedist last summer for the summer. She's one of 12 Pac-12 players to be named a top 30 candidate for the Senior Class Award, which is an historic national award that re rewards customer service, or excuse me, a community service and character, conviction, and success in the classroom. Yeah, Sam, you mentioned earlier the signals. It's so mm -hmm. important where you serve the ball, and you see how Stanford's really taking advantage. Depending on what the opposition's rotation is, if you can kind of jumble up the offense so it doesn't run smooth, but most teams have three receivers, and you want to try to go to the weaker receiver to expose them and try to make them shank a pass. Yeah, both these teams are spending quite a bit of time discussing with their players what the other team's tendencies are. So uh, Stanford certainly managing that scouting report better and better as the match has progressed. Yeah, Oregon that, was on fire to start. Yeah, that's what it's all about, you know, watching video, learning tendencies, and then when you have players out there that can learn tendencies on the fly during the match, as I was mentioning, Morgan Hentz does constantly, that puts you even in a better situation. Holly Campbell with a kill. Hentz is such a good passing libero as well. She's got seven assists today. It, it, more often than not, when she digs the ball, Dane, her dig is almost a pass. I mean, it goes to the perfect spot. Yeah, it's crazy. Last season, she only had 15 service errors the entire season. Wow. You don't want to serve the ball near Morgan Hunt. Formico chases. Point Oregon. And then Sickle rotates back to serve. Stanford up 17 to six, trying to win this match in four sets. Oregon came out and won the opening set, 25-16. Stanford won the second, 25-21. The third, 25-17. And Campbell has really made her presence felt here in this fourth set. Campbell now up to nine kills. She and Alade have nine, follow uh, trailing Plummer's 17. More uh, perspiration getting wiped up off the court, so that's why McClure is waiting to serve. Again, Oregon had a big win earlier this year, upsetting then number one Minnesota. It was their first win over number one team since 2012. Ducks were picked to finish third in the Pac-12 this year. That's where they are right now, tied with UCLA. And a service error by McClure. And there's a good look at Taylor Bora, the 6'4 junior outside hitter, transferred from North Carolina. You know, Coach Ulmer put her in in that trip to UCLA and USC, and she absolutely dominated. She was National Player of the Week because of those two matches. Yeah, she was National Player of the Week, the seventh player at Oregon to ever receive that honor. And then she twisted that ankle against Utah. So she's on the sideline. Coach Olmer told me he's going to take his time getting her back because he wants her back for the tournament and playoff time. But they are short a player this afternoon. Again, uh, this Oregon team had to go with just six last week against Utah. 
but I am very impressed with the competitive spirit of this Oregon team and with the recruiting class that's in place. Uh, the future looks very bright for Oregon volleyball. Matt Ulmer doing an excellent job in his second season as the head coach here. Vander Weide, she's a senior. And Vander Weide has been the go-to player for Oregon Day, her 13th kill. Stanford still enjoying a 10-point advantage. Wow. Are you kidding me? How about that angle? That was executed <laughs> so nicely by Catherine Plummer. This is that beach game translating on to the indoor surface. She gets up, we call that the cut shot right there. And that one right in bounds. <laughs> Maybe surprised she, herself. She impressed herself, yeah. That was awesome. Uh, it's funny, as soon as she hit that, I could just see on the beach, Dane, yeah. that ball hitting the sand and the sand flying up just off the line. That was beautiful. And uh, as Dane mentioned earlier, she's one of the players that plays indoor and beach. Stanford five points away from a four-set win. Plummer knocking it right at Tuscog, and hence almost got that to go over, but it's Point Oregon. Like what Rasky did there. She didn't go into the block. It was kind of a reverse tip dump. You don't see that move very often, but she was very aware of where the open court was. Nunna Miller keeps it alive. Van Sickle. Van Sickle with her 12th kill, hitting 281 right now, and she has been solid. Actually, make it 303 yeah. now, so over 300 as an outside hitter is impressive. She's got eight digs as well, close to a double double. Good dig in the back row by Tuscott. Nona Miller keeps it alive. This has got to go over, and it does. And Plummer hammers it. That's what Stanford does to you. You make a spectacular play like that. Keep that ball in, and then you have the huge weapons coming at you. Look at the extension there, keeping it alive, and then somehow Van Sickle uses everything she's got to get it over, but Plummer executes it to the floor. And that beautiful in-system volleyball at Stanford. Hints to Gray to Plummer. So back to a 10-point advantage for Stanford, 22-12 here in the fourth set. Stanford looking to maintain its unblemished record in the Pac-12. Only loss Stanford's had this year to number one BYU. Good block. That's wide. Point Stanford. Yeah, it looks like trouble for Oregon. Remember, we mentioned when Oregon wins the first set, they had not lost a match, and right now they are up against it with Stanford just a couple of points away. I think we're going to get a challenge on that last play on whether there was either a touch or the ball in or out. It looked clearly like it landed out of bounds. Yeah, so maybe so too. they're challenging the touch. Take a look here on the outside. Stanford putting up the block. No yeah, time. there's the, well, net the net right yep. there net on violation. the way down. That's so. right. So there is a, a net violation here. You can you can see number four in red. That's McClure grazing the net on her way down, and that's a, that's a violation. So it would be point Stanford. Oregon with one challenge left. Stanford has one challenge left. As Dane mentioned earlier, you get three challenges per match. But Stanford has uh, shown a lot of composure. This has been an incredible atmosphere supporting the Oregon Ducks. And Stanford has come in and withstood the passion of these fans. And it looks like they're going to walk away with a four-set win.
A week seven Monday night football will be coming your way soon. It's the Giants and the Falcons. And it will come on 8.15 p.m. Eastern time. That's 5.15 Pacific on ESPN. It's simulcast on ESPN2 in Spanish, available on the ESPN app. Coverage starts with Monday night countdown at 6. So this week's Monday night football matchup, the New York Giants and the Atlanta Falcons. So the ruling was a net violation on Stanford. So the point will go to Oregon and Veronica Stone will go back to serve, but it, it may take a miracle if Oregon's gonna get themselves back into this one. I know there's no such thing as a moral victory, but I do like what I've seen from Oregon today. I think things are looking very good for this Oregon team. They've competed well against Stanford. And when I say that, these coaches want to win matches. Some coaches, though, take the opinion of it's, it's more of a process. They're building toward a, a future goal. Stone to serve again. Oregon trailing by eight. Alade pushes it into the net. And a little rally going on here by the Ducks. They've cut it to seven. They are putting up a fight, and I completely agree with you, Sam. This is a confidence builder for Oregon, regardless of what happens. They've shown that level they can play at. Now it's about doing it each and every point and trying to get as consistent as possible. But that's the name of the game. That is much easier said than done. Fitzmorris makes it 23-15. Fitzmorris with nine kills today. Only one hitting error and 20 swings. It's a 400 hitting percentage. And it is Hintz back to serve, waiting for her instructions on where to serve it. Target set at Tustad. And then Sickle is blocked. It is match point Stanford. been all Stanford after that first set. They just have really turned it up. That They have that ability to be aware that we are in a fight here and we need to step it up. I think they may have came out a little too, uh, a little too slow, and, but definitely happy how they finish. McClure ends the match and keeps Stanford undefeated in the Pac-12. So the Stanford Cardinal came in and dropped the opening set, but have gone on to win their 16th straight match and their 12th straight against Oregon. They have not lost a match since the end of August to undefeated BYU. BYU ranked number one, Stanford ranked number two. And uh, Kevin Hamley are uh, very happy to get out of the state of Oregon without a loss because his team lost the first set in both of their matches here in this state this weekend. But Another fantastic performance by one of the most talented teams in the sport. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And Oregon has to walk away with their head held high here. They hit 289. They hit nearly 300, which is not a bad match at all. They stepped up their game uh, in that first set and kind of showed us glimpses of what they're capable of doing. It was just, I think, the serving pressure from Stanford down the stretch that was just a little bit too much for the serve receive of Oregon. So if you're going back looking at the tape in your Oregon, you're saying we got to pass the ball a little bit better and we got to serve a little tougher. One of the players that we talked about in the open had a fantastic match, Catherine Plummer. She came up huge today. Oh yeah, and she's so reliable. She was a little quiet in the first set. And I think you said it, Sam. We haven't heard from Catherine Plummer in a bit. And maybe she heard you because she started to step it up. She had 19 kills, hitting 333, 45 attempts. So she's used to that kind of a workload. And she really took this team to another level. It was never in doubt. Not only was she an offensive threat, but blocking as well. And Stanford, business as usual, they make it 16 in a row. Well, you never get an easy match, it seems like, in the Pac-12. And Stanford takes everyone's best shot. They have a tough weekend coming up. Friday, they'll be at USC, then follow that up with a match at UCLA, then Colorado, Utah, 
at Palo Alto against Oregon on November 8th and we'll finish the Pac-12 schedule on November 9th. And a reminder, Tuesday night, you got to watch this. ESPN Basketball, a love story, our unprecedented 20-hour film that consists of more than 60 interconnected short stories. It continues this Tuesday. Episodes 5 and 6 start at 7 Eastern, and all of the episodes are also streaming on the ESPN app. That is a fun watch. It's a fun watch today to see these two Pac-12 teams battle it out. Stanford, the number two ranked team in the nation, comes from a set down to defeat a fired up Oregon Duck team. For Dane Bland and all of our hardworking men and women here in Eugene, Oregon, I'm Sam Gore. Thanks for joining us, everyone.